Hello, in this last section, we're going to talk about what determines the long-term viability of a company. The long-term viability of a company obviously depends on its ability to grow. And we have um, classified growth, um, look, or look at growth from multiple perspectives. If you look at it from the manager and owner's perspective, um, in order to grow, there are, there are you need we definitely need funds. We need money to grow. And the great, the great distinction is where do the money come from? If the com money comes from internally, meaning this is money that is generated as profit by the firm, that is classified as internal growth. So internal growth, the determinants of internal growth is contingent upon how profitable the firm is. And that obviously depends on the marketing and production strategy of the firm. So it, is, it, it used a very lean manufacturing process. It can have a higher profit margin, or it can have a very successful marketing strategy and be able to charge a higher premium for its product. Again, they will increase profit margin. Uh, second is total asset turnover. So this is the use of um, as how efficient the company uses this, this asset and financial leverage. Notice that this is the first three component is the ROE, return on equity, and also the um, DuPont identity. The second is to take into account sustainable growth. Sustainable growth um, take into account the dividend policy. So in addition to generating funds, the, com the manager also have to decide the money that is generated. Should they get paid out as dividend to stockholders or should they be retained for future investment in the firm? So that's what the term sustainable refers to. In contrast to raising external equity to finance a firm's growth. So an internal growth is one that is generated strictly by internal uh, profit. Um, it does allow the firm to borrow. So borrowing is allowed when we think about internal growth. Sustainable growth takes into account retained earnings. So this is including borrowing and keeping some of the earn some of the profit as retained earnings for future growth. So sustainable means it's sustainable without raising external equity. And the last source of fund that's available for growth is by selling new stocks or new equity. Um, because new equity is the most expensive form of capital, this is oftentimes um, less used for mature firm. For new companies who do not have a track record for borrowing or they do not have a lot of build up retained earnings, they don't have much their their primary source of fund for growth for growth will be coming from external source. So next we're gonna take a look at the first two. Uh, we're gonna look at what is the maintain what kind of internal growth can a firm maintain and what kind of sustainable growth can a firm maintain. So obviously, as we said earlier, dividend policy plays an important part. So we're going to look at that, that next. So how much a firm pays out as dividend and how much it keeps as retained earning is called the dividend payout ratio. The dividend payout ratio is defined as total dividend divided by net income. Uh, because dividend is oftentimes reported on a per share basis, sometimes that can that we will also use that. So DPS here stands for dividend per share, so D is dividend. Um, EPS stands for earnings per share, so E is earnings. PS is on a per share basis. So you, uh, in our example, you see that the dividend and income um, translate into 0 0.0901. So what that means is for every dollar that the company generates in income, the company pays out nine cents, 9.01 cents as dividend. A ratio that is closely related to dividend payout ratio is called the retention ratio. Um, your textbook used the letter B to represent the retention ratio in some of the formulas. The retention ratio is defined as one minus the payout ratio. So in our example, the retention ratio is one minus 0.0901. So in other words, it pays out 
for every dollar of income, the company pays out nine cents in dividend and it retains nine, 90.99 cents for reinvestment. So it's a very high retention ratio, but not exceptional. So again, we have to look at the age of the firm and the industry to see how common the dividend practice is. So it's not uncommon to see firms with a very high retention ratio that is in this growth stage. How do we use this, in, this information? Well, the internal growth rate tells us how much the firm can grow by using internally generated fund only. So in here, they do not take into account debt or equity. So there's no external borrowing and there's no um, new equity. The internal growth rate is defined as ROA, which is return on asset times B. Remember that B is the return uh, retention ratio. In other textbook, you may only have the numerator and does not have the denominator. There's a technical difference in terms of concept. Um, for most companies, the difference is very small if the numbers are not uh, significant. But following your textbook, we will use um, this format with both the numerator and the denominator. So we're gonna use the information that we have computed earlier. So uh, please pause the video and go through your notes to find your calculation for uh, the results you have obtained for ROA and the retention ratio that we just computed. Welcome back. The, re the ROA return on asset is 5.38% and the retention ratio is 0 0.9099. Remember the order of operation. So to find the answer, you first have to, in the new denominator, you first have to multiply this together and then subtract that from one before you do the division. And the answer is 5.15%. The sustainable growth rate is closely related to the internal growth rate. The main difference is that the sustainable growth rate um, allowed the firm to ease to debt by maintaining a constant debt ratio. So if the company currently has a debt ratio of um, 0.27%, for example, um, then it will continue to borrow at that same rate. So every dollar of reaching earning that a company generates, it will borrow at the same ratio. So retain earning is considered equity. So keep that in mind. So as long as the firm is generating positive retain earning, the company will borrow money and that borrow fund in combination with retain earning will be able to finance the firm's growth. So you expect the firm to have a higher sustainable growth rate than the internal growth rate. So in our case, again, the sustainable growth rate is defined as ROE, or return on equity, times the retention ratio. So notice it's very similar. The only difference is for sustainable growth rate, we use ROE. For internal growth rate, we use ROA. And as expected, the sustainable growth rate is higher, is 7.2%. So the way that we'll use this information for us is we can look at the company and estimate the growth that you hope or expect the company to be able to maintain. So in here, you can, by doing the calculation, you see that this firm will be able to achieve a 5.38% growth or 5.15% growth without borrowing additional funds. And you'll be able to generate a 7.2% growth without selling new equity. So those are useful benchmarks. It does not mean that the company will grow or has to grow or limited by those numbers, but you tell, those are important benchmarks for us to, to evaluate future actions of management. So if it has an internal growth rate of 5.15%, and you saw that the company didn't increase its debt in the next three or four years, and didn't issue any new equity, but only has achieved growth of 3%, that means they are, they are performing below expectation. Uh, if the company is allowed to borrow money and they do not achieve the, the sustainable growth rate, again, this is a target. Um, or, on the other hand, you may compute the sustainable growth rate to be 7.2%, and management announced that they have a target growth rate of 20% per year. 
then you know that that means the company must be planning to issue new stocks. And some, cons some investors are concerned about that. So if you do not buy, want to buy into a company that's going to issue new stocks soon, and you computed the sustainable growth rate of 7.2%, and you know that management is, is determined to have a target growth rate of 20%, that implies that the company will issue new stock, and that may not be a compatible investment for you. It does not mean that it's a bad thing to issue new stocks. It's just important to know that that is part of the company's strategy. Um, which leads to us as to, to conclude in this chapter, why do we spend all this time looking at financial statements? As earlier on, I said this is one of the three important um, principles um, of financial analysis. And the reason for it is it has many different uses. Internally for management, we need to do performance evaluation um, any, in any uh, principle in any divisions of management. So how do you determine compensation? How do you determine performance attribution between divisions? Um, how do you plan for the future, particularly in helping you estimate future cash flows and um, also evaluating uh, does the company uh, perform according to the targets? Um, external uses, um, creditors, uh, banks, if a company want to borrow money, it must have financial statements and c creditors and banks will use those um, financial statements to help them determine whether or not the company can pay off its interest, can pay off its principal, uh, what is its current debt ratio. Same thing for creditor, uh, for suppliers, if you want to have credit terms with your supplier. Um, as well as your customers. Your customers want to know if your company is going to be around for a while. So especially if your business model or, or the products and service that you deliver are long-term uh, products or services that companies rely on. And finally, um, as stockholders or potential investors, they definitely want to evaluate the, the financial statement to see whether or not this is a good investment. Finally, in order for you to use these ratios effectively, it's very important to, for you to compare it against the industry benchmark. So by themselves, the, in, the, the ratios are not very useful. Um, they are one step above the absolute numbers. Um, more importantly is to do time analysis. So this is sometimes called um, vertical analysis. It look at the company's performance over time. And another is peer group or horizontal or cross-sectional analysis. Um, you can find companies in the same industry. They, they are classified by SIC or, um, or NAICS. This stands for North American Industry Classification Codes. So you can look up what, the, what industry a particular company belongs to and we'll be able to identify peers so that you can look at the performance of the firm, your particular firm relative to its peers. This concludes the module on financial statement analysis.